Hey gang, in an unexpected stroke of luck, or more likely just the devs managed to punch a hole through something that was blocking me off and other people with big accounts, or maybe I just got lucky, who knows. I was actually able to get into 318 with my big account, so now I can actually do the thing that I was planning on doing a week ago. Although, given the state of the servers, uh, that could be a terrible idea, we're gonna find out. Uh, so in this episode, if you want to stay tuned, I was planning on moving all of my ships up to Grim Hex. And as I do, just kind of go through uh, what I think of each ship that I own. And some of these ships, just as a heads up, are actually loners that I don't actually have. It's because I have some other ship that gives me access to that ship. Uh, I'll kind of go through that, too. Just the loner system is kind of weird. Um, and I would do some shameless plugging for the carnival, which is the org that I am in. Uh, so if that sounds fun, go ahead and stick with me and let's get this. So this was immediately predictable, but having all of IAE in what I had planned to have two shows, uh, was probably a little short-sighted. So this one ended up a bit longer than I thought it would, so I ended up breaking it into more parts than I uh, than I originally planned on. Uh, so enjoy the show, y'all. All right, so for today, the plan is mostly, well, provided the ship terminals work as expected, which that one's no good. This one's good. Uh, I am going to go through each ship I own on this. Welcome. The whale of a canal and uh just kind of talk about each ship in turn uh while i'm calling this one up selected. if it works um Your vehicle has ooh, been hey that came up location. way faster than it usually does i think the uh the devs might have had a breakthrough last night um the carnival which is the group i own uh or run sort of ostensibly uh, it's actually, we kind of have an elected leadership, which is a little bit unusual. And then we have three unelected members, but the highest ranking, that was seven, highest ranking unelected member, uh, actually has as much power and votes as those of us who are permanent members. Uh, so the goal there is to kind of get it that you have some ownership, um, in the game you know okay so this is bugged right now typically those wings are supposed to be sticking straight up and down but i kind of like that that's kind of a cool look um but one of the things that i have heard is that other orgs will uh they'll only recruit you or only allow you to join if you have certain ships which is ridiculous to me uh our problem in the carnival is that we have a ton of ships, but we don't have enough people to actually man them all. Uh, like you'll see as I go through these, my ship in the verse is gonna be the Banu Merchantman. And I got most of these vehicles here to help protect and escort that Banu Merchantman, which means I have absolutely no designs on ever flying those ships and you'll see there's some cool ships in that bunch uh but what i need is people that will command and crew those ships or service crew on my own banner merchant man uh eventually once cig has actually fixed the org system so that i can say yes this org member has access to command ship x so guys so weird there we go so this is the eclipse uh which i'm sure you've heard about there is a little thing floating below it there uh this is the best in show skin or one of the best in show skins i think from a year or so back uh but the eclipse is a stealth fighter bomber it has two very small guns on it, uh, two badgers, which I believe are size twos. Um, 
but what it's known for Thank you. Please is please. that the Argos 9 is a size 9 torpedo. So you have this little tiny ship that's very, very sneaky and very stealthy that has the ability to launch these big ass torpedoes and it carries three of them. So this thing is meant to pop out of nowhere, pop a big ship, something like the hammerhead size and then fly away. It's a uh, relatively short range, but very sneaky. So let's take a look at it. There it is right there. Uh, very cool looking ship. Um, a lot of its features, even though stealth gameplay isn't really in the game right now, the Eclipse actually does benefit from stealth gameplay. Uh, they kind of hard coded in its ability to hide. So let's go. Port all is kind of risky in this patch because you have a lot of frustrated people hanging out there blowing ships up, but I'm going to start there and then jump to Yela. Um, so yeah, Eclipse. If you're kind of into the stealth gameplay, want to be a big ship killer, kind of a one shot wonder, this is probably the ship for you. I believe this should be Yela out here. Whoa, my friend. Wow, there's a bunch of ships there. Bet those are all dead. So yeah, you want to kill big ships, um, kind of an all or nothing ship. This is definitely specialized. Uh, this would not be the bomber I would take to a, to a system like Pyro because uh, this ship has short range. So if you take it to Pyro, you're going to be operating just around that station, which if your target is near that station, that's great. If not, you're in trouble. So I just noticed this Miner's Lament. I think that's a new racetrack, uh, but we are headed to Hex. So let's go ahead and do that. The goal for today is to it's kind of practice in theory. There's kind of a rumor going around that will get a wipe in 318.1. I have no idea if that is true or not. Um, CIG hasn't really confirmed that. I wouldn't be shocked given some of the issues. And I mean, on my alt account, I've already lost uh, a couple skins and armors uh, just from logging on and off. So yeah, I, they might be having a wipe for 318.1. I would not be shocked. Uh, but this is just good practice to get in is moving all of this stuff. I also don't really pull all of my ships too often. I only have about three or four ships that I fly in a daily driver. Like I was saying, a lot of my ships I bought specifically to escort or support my being a merchant man. So um, I don't fly them on the regular because they're not really the game loop that I'm super interested in. Uh, but we'll kind of be going through that when we get there. So let's go ahead and we'll land at Grim Hex here and we'll get on to the next ship. So as we try to dodge the wreckage of this uh, cutty here, um, one of the things that is notable about the Eclipse is those big wings. Uh, so right now that doesn't make a big difference, but once aerodynamic gameplay is in once that flight model is in it might start actually making a difference and this is a ship that will probably benefit from that a lot so again if you're flying into hex uh just be careful there's a lot of debris around i think that's true of all of these stations so let's go ahead and land and we'll get the next ship Okay, so I might as well talk about this one now. This is the 135C, um, which is the 100i cargo variant. If you're going to get one of the 100 series, this one is the one that I think is most useful. Um, the cool thing about the 100i is that you can actually spawn it at mining outposts so you can pull this thing up at a mining outpost and it'll appear on the same pad that the um 
that your ground vehicles will appear on. Uh, it is not a fighter, so the 125A, I think is what it is, uh, the fighter variant, the only difference is, is that it has a couple missiles. Uh, this ship is not a fighting ship. Uh, don't do that to yourself because it's in frustration. So it has this bed that you can log out on, which makes it pretty good. You can spawn it at a mining facility and it has a bed you can log out in and it carries a ton of cargo. Uh, so you can easily run box missions in this thing because it has these steps right here. It's easier to get into and out of the 300 series. Uh, but the respawn time on this, the sort of call up time on the ship is extremely short like all starters the one downside is that it costs more money than most of the other starters which is why most people avoid it uh but otherwise flies really nice and um probably wouldn't be the first ship i would um uh, probably wouldn't be the first ship i would say take as a starter um, if you're just getting into the game, but you could do worse. Uh, but I would say avoid the 100i, avoid the 125a, I think is what it is, the fighter variant, and just go straight for the 135c. Uh, flies great, and I am going to be using it since its respawn time is so fast. I am going to be using it to fly from Grim Hex to Orison as kind of my transport ship so that I can move ships. So this is going to be the last time I'm going to talk about this guy. It does fly pretty well. I am going to fly out kind of carefully because I'm remembering that there was debris out here and I've been hearing a lot. Oh, nope. I guess it was over there. Okay. Well, then I can speed up. So watch out for debris when you're leaving Grim X because that's in the armistice zone. So it's never going to be moved until they start coming up with the system for cleaning up. Let's head on back to Orson and get the next ship. Can I just say how nice it is that they actually bring you in this close to Orison now? That is a huge quality of life. If you're not used to flying into Orison, if you're trying to figure out where to land because everything's floating in the sky, Look for this thing that looks like an octopus that someone smashed onto a wall, and that is your landing zone, which usually you are going to see someone park there just like that. Uh, that is your LZ. Much easier to find at night because it's got uh, four red lights around it and then four red lights on the inside, and those are the only things you need to look for. So yeah, you can see stairs, easy in, easy out, even if you're running boxes, really easy to get in and out of this ship. Uh, I showed you the internal bay. Again, this is the 135C. This is not the, uh, this is not the big boy. So hang on. And this is the rear bay, which you can sort of see it makes a ramp. I don't think any bikes will fit in this thing but if need be uh you could actually fit a um a few people in there uh, so if somebody needs a pickup and you don't totally trust them you could put them in this cargo bay uh and might be a better option because they have no way to get to you uh just thought uh, again, you've got the usual component entrances over here and stuff. This one's a more modern ship, so uh, they kind of future-proofed it a little bit better than some of the models I'm going to be showing you. Uh, but yeah, 135C, decent ship, decent starter. Uh, flies pretty nice, a bit more expensive than the Aurora and the um, Mustang. So next ship up here is the Gladius. I feel like this one doesn't need as much explanation. Uh, whole reason I have this one in my stable, or I guess my hangar, 
is because it is the ship that's guaranteed to be the bleeding edge of whatever technology CIG is rolling out. It's going to have the best controls, everything else, because this is the hero ship for Squadron 42. So anytime they're implementing new tech, you're going to see it on this ship first, barring some game loop that doesn't appear in Squadron 42, like uh, salvaging, for example. Uh, Gladius flies really nice. Um, at the moment, it's kind of neck and neck with the arrow uh, for being... Like I said, new tech, like teleporting into the uh, to the sea. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, good ship flies really well. Good fighter. It's always going to kind of be as far as light fighters go, kind of the meta, just because it is the hero ship of Squadron 42. Um, eventually, that's all going to balance out because uh, all these fighters are going to have their specific niches and light fighters are going to be kind of the harassers. They're going to be short range, uh, able to fly circles around the big boys. They'll be able to kind of be annoying, but they're not going to be able to do a huge amount of damage and they're not going to be able to take a huge amount of damage. But that said, uh, yeah, Gladius, you, you could do worse in it is it is fun to fly. And it looks pretty. If you're into that kind of thing. So the Gladius accelerates pretty quick, not quite as fast as the arrow. Um, again, you'll note that it has good wings on it. So once aerodynamic flight is in the game, uh, and flight controls are in the game, this thing should be pretty maneuverable in the atmosphere. Uh, it won't be totally reliant on thrusters. Uh, for guns, um, if I remember right, it has a size three gun up front on the nose and size twos on the wings, I believe. I might be off. Those actually look like size threes. So I think it's like a size four and two size threes. Could totally be wrong on that. Has a good mix of missiles. Uh, yeah, when Squadron 42 drops, this should be a pretty fun ship to fly for the majority of it. Uh, not a whole lot else to say. Uh, if you want the meta fighter, you could do worse. Uh, just keep in mind that it is going to be range limited when the time comes. So I'm going to show you a little trick here. Um, just with piracy being a thing in this game. Uh, I want to go to Yela, and you'll notice that I'm aimed at Selen. So what I'm going to do, I believe that is Yela right over there, so actually maybe I should go for Daymar instead. So this is Daymar. Where is Yela? Let me check. So we are... So yeah. So we're right here. Yela is right there. What I am going to do is called a short jump. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to aim myself at Daymar. And this is something that you can do to avoid some traps. We're going to jump here. Start going. And right about here. I killed my quantum travel. Now, where I am is in the middle of space. And what, is, what I've done is I have made it extremely difficult for anyone to time it right so that they can pop me out and ambush me. Not as big a deal in a Gladius, but a very big deal if you're running cargo or you just did a bunch of salvaging and now you're moving all that, I think it's called RMC over to be sold, do short jumps like this and come at things from different angles. Okay, so continuing our tour of Aegis ships, 
this one should be pretty familiar to you. This is an Aegis Hammerhead. Now, normally I would say anyone who pulls a Hammerhead solo is an idiot, but since I'm doing a very specific task here, uh, I'll make an exception this time. I would say minimum crew needed for a hammerhead to be even minimally viable is four people. So you have three of the turrets manned and a pilot. Uh, really, you should take this thing out with, I'd say, seven people. So a pilot and all the turrets manned. If you don't have the tail gunner manned, it's not the end of the world. Uh, but it doesn't hurt. That's not always the most exciting position on the ship. Um, but this thing kind of flies like a brick because the turrets give it all the coverage it needs. So uh, it doesn't need to fly particularly well. With that said, whoops, I got on the wrong side. I don't pull this one too often unless I've got the crew to run it, which lately has been an issue. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into this and I'll show you what the innards look like. I won't take you on the full tour. I'll just kind of swing around here. Um, you kind of got the main guts of the ship back this way. You've got a turret there, a turret on the far side. Um, let's see, there's the captain's quarters here, which again, he has a little desk. He's got a bed through there and a shower. Uh, I think this is, what is this? We don't... Usually these are marked. What is? Oh, oh, oh that's that's the uh, dorsal turret. Uh, cargo engine room, bridge, uh, cargo. This thing doesn't carry horrible cargo. Uh, this is the crew quarters. So again, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight people plus the captain. Once you have um, multi crew gameplay in. That'll, that'll be important. Those other two roles will be important for the engineer. <gasps> this is a new ship. Why is it leaking? Anyways, uh, place to store stuff. Yeah, Hammerhead's kind of a cool ship. Uh, if you can really get it crewed up, it is absolutely beastly. Um, when armor comes in, it'll be that much more durable and tough. Um... This right here is the docking ring, uh, which, for whatever reason, it spawned me in a hangar for this one, so didn't need that. Believe there is a ladder right here, uh, but you can hit this button there to call the elevator up. Again, very cool ship. There's going to be a few that I pull up here that I say do not run this ship solo. This ship is one of those ships. Do not run it solo. Now, unlike some of the ships I'm going to be showing you in a bit, this ship is actually in my fleet. This one, you can't see the name on it, but this one is actually named Carnivore. And this one is in my fleet. Now, the reason I have this in the fleet kind of goes along with my Death Star idea. And this kind of goes back to what I was saying that a lot of ships in my fleet I have specifically in order to escort my Banu Merchantman, which I'm planning on going to places like Pyro, where the Banu Merchantman is basically just going to be a giant loot pinata that people will drool over. And in order to make them drool a little bit less, I plan on having ships like Carnivore here to kind of help defend her. Now, this is part one of my Death Star idea. She doesn't fly terrible in atmosphere, but she doesn't fly great. So uh, I would recommend taking this one into space. Um, like I was saying before, this is one of those ships that I have in my fleet that I have zero plans. I mean, right now I'll take her out and fly her. Uh, but when the game goes live, I will almost never fly this ship. I bought the ship specifically so that other people could fly it and crew it and take it out, captain it, 
without without me ever touching it. So that sounds appealing to you. Maybe hop on over to the carnival, which is down in the links in the down below parts and give us a shout. You could be piloting or crewing or engineering on this ship because I won't be taking this out. I'll be in my Banu merch van one day when CIG allows us to gift ships to other players or give them access. Now again, here you'll notice she doesn't handle terribly in zero G that when she's in space, she rolls pretty quick, which you would not expect for a ship this size, uh, actually handles pretty well in space. Uh, not sure if that's always going to be the case, um, but for right now it is. Uh, we'll see what happens when flight control planes come into it. So this ship right now in this build, if it um, in 318, if you load this thing up with ballistics, uh, it'll chew through just about anything very quickly. At the moment, uh, the Redeemer is arguably better bang for your buck because its crew is about, I'd say, a third of the Hammerheads, but its damage output, just because of the nature of the game, is about the same, and it's not particularly difficult to pop a Hammerhead with a Redeemer. I would expect that to change once armor is in the game, that the Hammerhead will have much heavier armor than the Redeemer. But at the moment, this is kind of what we're dealing with. So a couple of the weird things about the Hammerhead, you'll notice that in the captain's seat here, uh, very hard to see where you're going. Um, and that is kind of deliberate. It is You do not have a lot of visibility, and that is mostly intentional. This is what we like to call a tight fit. Jesus. <laughs> Thanks, Grimex. CIG, just a thought here, but maybe make it that you can get one UEC for taking these bottles and putting them in sort of sort of trash receptacle like that thing up there that incinerates them or essentially deletes them from the server because this cannot be doing good things for the frame count and maybe do something with the bodies. Just a thought. So this ship might look a little familiar. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's another hammerhead. Now, this one may look like a hammerhead, but is actually the first of the loners. So this one is not actually a hammerhead. It's a Perseus, or at least it will be one day. Now, the Perseus is kind of the opposite of the hammerhead, where the hammerhead is meant to kill fighters the Perseus is meant to kill things that are a lot bigger. So think things uh, Connie sized or larger. The Perseus is going to shoot huge holes in. It's got two gigantic cannons on it or two gigantic turrets on it. So total of four guns. Each one has two. Uh, but the other bonus is that it has a smaller crew. So where's the hammerhead? This one right here probably has a realistic crew of eight to nine. The Perseus has a crew of probably, I would say to be safe, four to five. Um, the thing is, is that if it's hit by a fighter swarm, it'll just get annihilated. Uh, it, it won't have many counters to like the Eclipse or fighters like that. Uh, but if it's up against the kinds of ships that would hurt a ship like the Hammerhead, it's actually in much better shape. Think like Retaliators, Andromedas, uh, other subcaps. It's probably, it could probably tangle 
with something this size. Is it telling me to take off? Uh, it could probably tangle with something the size of a Polaris. Uh, not for very long because the Polaris is a much harder hitter than the hammer or than the Perseus. Uh, but not bad, not bad at all. Uh, but again, so a lot like Carnivore, the hammerhead that I just showed you before, this Perseus is also a ship that I bought fully acknowledging that I will not be the one flying that ship, that that ship is gonna be reserved for someone in my org to fly so that they can escort my Banu Merchantman. And the goal there is to kind of cover the issues that the Banu Merchantman could have. Probably the Banu Merchantman itself hits pretty hard, but given the amount of cargo it carries, it's also an extreme target. Uh, so the goal is to kind of surround that ship with as many heavy hitters as possible so that when somebody comes in, they would much rather trade with me than blow me up and steal my stuff just to make it so painful for them that the option of trading is more enticing and more appetizing than killing me and just taking my stuff. And the Perseus and the Hammerhead are kind of two pieces of that. So again, if the idea, if you've always wanted to fly a Perseus or command a Perseus or operate the turrets in the Perseus or be an engineer on a Perseus and you didn't have the money just laying around in order to get a Perseus of your own, uh, join the carnival. We'll hook you up. We need people to fly these things. Uh, we are not like other orgs that are just thinking you got to bring a Perseus to us. No, we've we've got one. We need people to crew them. We need people to pilot pilot them. We need people to captain them. So that sounds appealing. Feel free to join up. Like I said, going to be doing a lot of plugging for my org in this one. I am going to add the uh, one caveat to that that CIG has not gifted us with the tools of being able to give people access to those uh, ships yet. So I can't go into some setting either in the game or on the web page and say this person, this person, this person all have access to this ship. They are crew or captain of this ship, even though I own it, they can use it. Uh, that is not in the game yet. Hopefully soon I have a strong suspicion that one of the unannounced contents on the deliverables is, um, is actually one of those. Oh, uh, one of the few things you can control from the pilot seat is 16 missiles there. 16 arresters, 16 vipers. Uh, let's see. That one is arresters are signature and vipers are heat. Uh, but it can spam out missiles when it needs to. So the pilot actually can control missiles. It's just you got a limited number, whereas the guns on the hammerhead are what are going to do it. Uh, my hope for the Perseus is they give us an energy option because if that is ballistic only, it does kind of lower its usefulness to me. Uh, I will also throw out there that while I don't have a Polaris, which is the, think of it as kind of a big attack sub, um, one of the people in our game or in our crew, our org, the carnival actually does. Uh, and he's going to definitely need crew just like the rest of us. So if that sounds appealing, again, drop us a line. Uh, and I should say another thing um, that is a little different from other groups is we allow affiliates. Uh, so if you 
are in a small org, let's say five to 10 people or something, you can keep your org and join our org and you'll be able to come in as a cell. The carnival uses a cellular structure and in that way, you can kind of keep your autonomy while getting all the benefits of having a bigger org around you. And what we'll do is we'll team you up with another cell that kind of either handles the logistics for you or is uh, defense or offense, that kind of thing, or refining ship org or whatever. Uh, that is our eventual goal is to be a cellular org of orgs. All right, I'm probably mostly done plugging the carnival, so let's get back to the ships. Mm -hmm.